Good morning, everyone. What a gorgeous day it is out there today. Uh, my name is Dave Sutton. I've been a uh, member here for maybe 20 years. I have, I'm, I'm an elder at this point in time. I have responsibility for missions and uh, the Memorial Garden. So if any of you have interest in those things, you can contact me. Um, you can turn to the announcements on the back of the bulletin. I just want to call out a couple of them. The deacons are having a collection for school supplies that they've done every year for quite a few years. And that'll be uh, open and there'll be a box in the narthex until August 11th, Thursday, August 11th. And then uh, the new directories are ready and I guess they're out in the narthex. So I encourage you to pick up one of those. And then uh, there's a women's fall tea and basket raffle on Saturday, October 15th. So the information is there in the bulletin. There's, a, I guess, a sign-up sheet. And uh, so I encourage you to, uh, to look into those. And um, does anybody have any other announcements they want to make at this time? OK. If you can join me in the call to worship, first page of your bulletin. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. Then speak the words of wisdom, the meditation of my heart will give you understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb, with the harp I will expound my riddle. No one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. Their life is costly. No payment is ever enough. They should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that the wise die, that the foolish and the senseless also perish, leaving their wealth to others. Despite their wealth, do not endure. They are like the beasts that perish. Please join in the hymn on, for hymn number 108. Uh, come Christians, join the sing. <laughs>
The scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. It's on your bulletin on the second page, or you can follow in the Pew Bible if you like. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with, inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Next hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Number 60.
Good morning, everyone. I'd like uh, everyone to take a moment to look at the prayer list that we have, uh, the people listed there going through life's journey and needing our help. Um, I would also like, uh, there are a couple of uh, prayers that didn't make it into the prayer list. Uh, uh, Robert Steele, a former member, uh, passed away this past week. Um, his service was yesterday, was uh, Friday, earlier this week. Um, we'd like to offer our prayers and condolences to his family, especially his wife Diane joining us. Um, and uh, his family's been tightly <coughs> related to the church over the years. Uh, I'd also like to mention Carol Ortlip has gone, went into the hospital last week. Uh, she's now in rehab, so she's recovering, uh, but also include her in your prayers. Uh, is there anyone who has any uh, prayers they'd like added that are not that are on the list? Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, for Betty Graham, her health concerns. Betty Graham. Okay, so we'd like to give a moment of silence and think and offer our prayers for those uh, on the list, for Robert and his family, Carol, Ralph, and Betty, and everyone else. And now, <clears throat> let us give the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, hello, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Michael Martin, one of the uh, elders of the church. Uh, we are between pastors right now. Uh, so if anyone knows a good one, point them in our direction. Uh, we also uh, have a need for people to do basically what Dave and myself are doing. Um, we, we have, inter we have uh, guest pastors come on various weeks, but we don't have every week filled, so that's why you're stuck with me this week. Uh, but, you know, uh, whether it's just for uh, reading the scripture or helping you with any part, uh, if you'd like to participate, participate, please let Greg know, uh, and we can help put you on the schedule to help fill out um, the ser services until we get a new pastor. Uh, this is a little bit of a difficult... Uh, sir, uh, difficult scripture this week just like Scott had a couple of weeks ago with uh, Martha doing all the work and preparing for Jesus and Jesus uh, telling her to chill out and hang out with Mary and l listen and not, not do the work and it's kind of counterintuitive to how we've been taught of do work and prepare and everything and in this case uh, here we start off with a man asking Jesus for help with his inheritance that him and his brother are having issues. And Jesus says, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? So he, he basically backs off and says, I, I don't want any part of this. Uh, seems a little cold. Um, so in preparation for today, uh, at my wife's suggestion, I watched a movie from 1938 called You Can't Take It With You. Uh, with uh, Fra by Frank Capra and it had Lionel Barrymore and Jimmy Stewart in it. Has anyone seen that movie? Not not a lot. You may be more familiar with a later movie that Frank, Frank Capra did also with Jimmy Stewart and Lionel Barrymore called uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And there's a lot of similarities between those movies. Uh, they're different stories but they have a lot of the same message. So <clears throat> You can't take it with you, tells the story of a family that has dropped out of the rat race and trusts in God to provide for them. Uh, they, but they don't just sit at home and wait for manna to fall from heaven. Uh, they do what they enjoy, but they use those things to make a living. They're not trying to get rich, but they are providing for themselves and helping their neighbors. Uh, and, and their neighbors love them for the help that they provide. This contrasts with Jimmy Stewart's father, Mr. Kirby, who's chasing after wealth for the sake of wealth itself, just getting money for the sake of getting money. So much so that he winds up driving another man to suicide. Spoilers. Uh, at the end, he comes to realize that his love of money is driving all love and friendship out of his life, and he follows the path of Lionel Barrymore's family, and wa he walks away from chasing wealth. Compare this with It's a Wonderful Life. In this story, Ly Lionel Barrymore, instead of being the godly man is the rich miser, uh, Mr. Potter. And he's willing to harm others in his pursuit of wealth. Jimmy Stewart, on the other hand, is the selfless man, willing to put his needs second in order to serve his fellow man and make their lives better. If you remember in the story, he wanted to go to college, become an architect, or, and he basically walks away from that and stays to run uh, the, the savings and loans to help his community. Uh, he regrets that he has done this when things go wrong, but by the end he realizes that he is richer in fellowship than any money could bring. Mr. Potter does not learn his lesson in this movie. Based on how society is today, a lot of people have forgotten that Mr. Potter is not the hero of the story. A lot of people em try to emulate, if you see what, what, how people are today, a lot of people are actually emulating his path. Um, so. Getting back to the scripture, inheritance can be a tri tricky subject and can be handled in many ways. Both of my parents were born in Ireland. My father was the oldest of nine children, the oldest son of nine children. He had an older sister. Um, I have 29 cousins on my father's side. Irish Catholic families were large, especially back then. Like many back then, they struggled to make ends meet. My father wound up dropping out of school to work and help support his family. Because of that, 
all of his siblings were able to go to college and most of them became teachers and nurses. Uh, my father was a carpenter for his entire life. My father never did get to continue school, but he was the best carpenter I've ever known. When his father died, he left my father alone, the family home. And as far as I know, his siblings didn't object to that because they knew that he had sacrificed for them. When my mother passed away a few years ago, she'd been living in an apartment next to my sister. Her and my father had bought that apartment and moved there after my father retired. She had managed to save a bit of money and own the apartment outright. My sister and I were given everything equally. There was no fighting over anything. If there were things that one wanted to keep, no problem. We traded off a few items that had significance to each of us. We came to an agreement for my sister to keep the apartment with favorable terms so she could have the two apartments next to each other and the rest of the estate we split without any dis disagreement. I have to admit the inheritance has come in handy in helping make our future retirement more secure. So is inheritance in general to be a bad thing? It has been a help for multiple generations of my family. So let's look at the full statement of Jesus. He didn't just say, man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. He then said, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. It's that second part there. So let's look at the rest of the reading. Jesus then segues into a parable about wealth and savings. The parable tells of a man that gets a windfall of crops and plans to save it and use it for the future. And this doesn't seem to be such a bad thing. But is that what Jesus is, say, is saying here? I don't think that's the critical part of the story. We can look at some of the other times that Jesus has spoken about money and wealth. Look at the parable of the three servants who were given money or talents. Two of them used the money to earn more and were, re and were rewarded. One of them just hid the money and saved it and was punished. He didn't use it for anything. It was basically a waste. Similarly, I think the key part of the reading's parable is when the farmer with his extra gain says that he will be able to take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. I think this is more what Jesus is objecting to, not using what you have. Jesus states at the end, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. It's the hoarding that I think is, is what he's getting at here. We can look at a few other passages where Jesus just discusses wealth and holding wealth. In Matthew 6, 19, 21, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Or Matthew 19, 23 to 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. And I think that gets to the crux of it. So is it money or wealth or investments that are bad, or maybe the love of money, the hoarding of wealth, or the lack of investment? Mr. Kirby learned in You Can't Take It With You that his love of money left him with nothing worth having. And George Bailey found that living his life for his family and his community gave him a wonderful life and also helped Clarence get his wings. So I think we should all try to help Clarence get his wings. Uh, the next hymn is In Christ There Is No East or West, number 697.
Okay. Um, if we have any non-members here, I should have mentioned this in the announcements, we'd like to make sure you uh, say hello to people, uh, sign, sign in the sign-in book. Uh, we hope to see you again in the future. Um, for the benediction today, I'm going to read uh, Luke 12 and Colossians 3. Happy are those who know real treasure and where to find it. Happy are those who receive God's treasure and share it unselfishly. Invest your life and your heart in Christ, just as God has invested Christ in you. Happy are those whose reward is found in heaven, not on earth. Now go in the name of Christ, God's ultimate gift of love. Thanks be to God. Our post lieu today, we'd ask you to sit and listen as Greg plays Speak, O Lord by Stuart Townsend. Thank you. 